Hey, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. So what, um, what is it you actually do for work? Is it photography based or not? No, no, not, not at all. It's, um, I mean, we, we work with photography in the term, in, in the sense that I work in tourism. Right. So um, uh, I work as a tourism officer for uh, Fife. Right. King of Fife. So um, we work in partnership with Visit Scotland and we promote um, Fife on a, a, a national and international um, platform, but also work with businesses as well, help them to market. And um, we have like executive boards and we create a, a tourism strategy and all that. Kind of, there's, there's a lot of boring stuff. There's, there's some exciting stuff, but I mean, it was, the reason I'm saying it's there is a, a, a linkage of, of sort is because um I, I got a degree in tourism and then after that I worked with Visit Scotland and then I, like that's when I kind of first remember seeing like images and, and yeah. images of Scotland thinking, ah right, okay, I'm quite interested in this. And that's probably like part of the foundation that, that led on to me actually getting a camera eventually and, you know, just giving it a go. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's quite interesting that so is that would you say that's why you started photography or did you kind of maybe take photos maybe when you were younger or is it just more recent yeah it's, it's it is more recent but it's, it's something i've always thought about doing i guess and and i don't really have like a specific answer for that yeah. question but i think i've got like lots of different paths towards it so um, when I was like primary school age um, and, and in high school, my mum had an art gallery, oh, yeah. and so we we'd often go to like like trade fairs in in England or or, or other parts yeah. of Scotland, etc. But it wasn't like I wasn't really into paintings or art with with um, acrylics or oils, etc. But um, I was always drawn to photos. I always always liked photographs. Yeah, and so I think that was one part of it. But then, um, with um, just using like like <laughs> filters on like the iPad or the iPhone, like like I mean like absolute nice. saturation, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and they're all still on my Instagram feed. If you keep going down, you'll yeah. see some crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just just eventually, I thought you know I'd, I'd I'd really like to give it a go. And obviously, I was I was playing them. Um, rugby was was what i did that was that was my hobby you know so it was like training during the week and then playing at the weekends and then coaching and um, primary school kids on sunday morning so that that was it that was kind of like what i did and then um i've always needed to sort of end it because of a, a neck injury that I endured quite a long time ago um down in your part of the world actually um i decided just to, to to go for it so I think it was March 2017 I just decided to um, invest in a well I, I actually just googled um, like best camera for beginners or something <laughs> something like that yeah. um, and I wanted something that could do long exposures that was the first thing I was kind of really into and um, I, I, I was following accounts like um, like Jamie Howden and you know his stuff like blew me away the colors and, and just you know it was awesome um, and there was a couple of local people that i'd seen do light trails in edinburgh and it just like okay. i just i was just like this is all like i love this this is awesome and yeah. I, I want to you know i want to give this a go and um, so i think that's that's kind of what led me to to, to actually purchasing it and then trying to sort of mimic some of the stuff that i'd seen um which was never really all that easy um but it's just you know it's it's just a lot of <laughs> i've probably been the most annoying guy just messaging people and saying how did you do that or what what's the yeah. settings to this or you know what sort of filter is it and um you know with a with a with a mortgage and, and two kids etc i can't really afford to be splashing out on like lee filters or anything like that That's so um, I'm quite proud that my, apart from like obviously I'm I'm, I've got this two month loan of a Nikon mirrorless Z7, but yeah. that aside, I am um, 
quite proud of the fact that I, I do st I, I've only used uh, an entry level camera, the D3300, and um, my tripod's like 13 quid. My 10 stop was nine quid off Amazon, and I've got a, um, another sort of filter that was like seven quid. Right. So, um, yeah, so I, I, it's, it's quite. I'm quite proud of the fact that I've, I've won some accolades, like, you know, with the uh, being commended in the Scottish Landscape Photography of the Year book, the Scots Magazine stuff, um, using equipment that's that's maybe not so, you know, it could be looked down upon uh, from other photographers, so to speak. Yeah. And I, I know I've had that before. I never class myself as a photographer. I, I don't know what, I, I think it's because I'm self-taught and I, don't know the the jargon and the technical aspects all that well so i never say i'm a photographer yeah. because i think it's an insult to actual photographers yeah. um but i have been in situations where i've been amongst photographers and it's it, sometimes it's a bit of a, a a clique or maybe i'm just like too enthusiastic i'm like hey guys <laughs> 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 or um, somebody once told me that um, photography is is you know a lot of people get into photography because they like to be alone you know so yeah. so maybe I should respect that and, and leave people be um, it's just not really in my nature so yeah, yeah. <laughs> no I totally um I totally get that I'm quite I'm quite similar in my way that I don't class myself as a photographer just almost think that because I've not done it for that long anyways, it's only been just over a couple of years that I find it very difficult to even like class myself as one because I'm still learning. Like I don't know enough I don't know enough about it to like go out and say that I'm a photographer. I just enjoy doing it. Um because I would say like honestly like our story is quite similar obviously not rugby I hated rugby uh, it was a uh, it was football for me but like so similar like just injuries and I just kind of needed that sort of extra thing or that other thing that would fill that gap uh, mm -hmm. so now I totally I totally get what you're saying and same thing with gearing things like buying like my tripod honestly <laughs> like I went um so my friend Cairn, he he basically well we went to Bamburgh Castle. That was our first mm -hmm. trip. And we got up at four in the morning or something, it was ridiculous. And I went and picked him up, went to Bamburgh, and I had a Lumix G three, which is a tiny, tiny camera, just like basic entry level camera. And I had a tripod <laughs> and the tripod was it's like one of those kids ones, like no joke, right? Uh, um, I, I wish I had it, but uh, no, I still have it, but I think it's in the attic. And um, so at, at Bambra, just at well, any beach, there's obviously like the, lo the long grass. Uh, and he obviously had his, whatever, I don't know, 50 quid tripod, let's say. And it could go up to eye level. And <laughs> I was on my knees. <laughs> I was on my knees with this horrendous uh, tripod with my camera and I couldn't see over the grass. <laughs> I couldn't see over the grass. And I was just, at that point, I was like, no, nah, I need to. Uh -huh. And I think, I think it was maybe 70 quid the one I bought, but it was okay. just that, it was just that embarrassment <laughs> of like, people walking past uh -huh. me. I was like on my knees in the grass. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. It's all part of the learning. So, it is. It's all part of the learning journey, isn't it? Exactly. So yeah. But even since exactly. like to be honest, since that, my gear hasn't changed that much. Yeah, I bought a new camera. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, I've still got kit lens, nothing too too expensive, but mm -hmm. yeah. I just I keep looking about getting like a lens on finance or just something like mm -hmm. it's it's almost about like being a bit greedy in a way, like a I can't really afford it. That's why I would do it through finance. But then, yeah. I would love it. It'd be one of those. I'd love it for the first couple of weeks of getting it. But then it's like oh, <laughs> fifty quid a month. Um, yeah, I know. I know. Well, you start to resent that fifty quid a month. I know. Um, my, I've got. I do have two lenses that I use. One is um, 
the 18 to 200 Nikkor, which is like, it's kind of like a travel lens. I mean, I, I, I have it, all, like I, I carry it about all the time. Of course I do, I've only got two, so it's not like a hassle. <laughs> um, and I just, I love comp compressing landscapes and stuff as well. So I love using that, especially in the city, like like Edinburgh and stuff. You know, when you're up Carlton Hill and you get you zoom right into the, the Balmoral or stuff. Um, and my other one is, a, a, I won a, a local competition and the prize was like 100 quid cash. So I just, I spent that 100 pound exactly on a, a 50 mil, a second hand 50 mil uh, nickel lens and that is just awesome it's such a good lens the sharpness is is incredible um, in low light it's really great and um, that's probably the best investment i've ever ever gone for and um, so i'm dead chuffed with that and to be honest it's, it's not really off my camera that that much lately and i think <clears throat> just because it's so sharp yeah i don't really want to to, to change it all that much you know i just love it absolutely love it plus because you can't zoom in or out you're kind of forced to be creative with it mm -hmm. which is is really good and that, that, that that's yeah I, I really like it so i i am enjoying this the, the mirrorless z7 is is incredible it's an incredible camera but um you know me and my nikon d3300 we've we've got history you know and I, <laughs> I just I, I know that i know it so well and i could just like you know like move all my thumbs and move the settings instantly i'm just getting to know that with the the mirrorless but the the quality of this this new one is like it's incredible it's absolutely insane and um, it's so compact it's so light so yes yeah, i've I'm on a bit of a different journey just now and I'm desperate like to to take it to, to different places in Scotland as well. So once the, the doors are open on the 26th of April, uh, the Notter Castle, I think is probably going to be one of my first protocols. Um, I'll take it to the Fourth Row Bridge and the Rail Bridge and Edinburgh, Kelpies. I want a lot of night shots because um, it's really good at low light. Yeah. So I really want to, and that's one thing that my camera and lenses struggle with. The the, the fifty mil is okay, but again, you're you're, you're fixed at, at that fifth, you know, at that one position. And yeah. um, so I'd love to take it and and play about with it in some some dark skies. So yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to that. Uh -huh. I, um, I can imagine it all well. It's like you say, because you're so used to what you've had before and that works for you, but it's probably so refreshing in a way to maybe sort of photograph differently, um, especially with a better camera that has maybe that, like you say, in low light, it could maybe, well, get you photographs that you, you wouldn't even dream about getting before. So yeah, as well, uh, you might as well use it while you can. Uh, I know. I don't know it's just it's juggling, uh, you know, a young baby and a, a child, and you know, it's just it's just all that nonsense that comes along with it as well. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is, you know, it's I, I'll probably put the kids to bed then, then head off to these places to get some some night nice yeah. shots. So, so that's it's easy done. I'm not not complaining. But no. um, yeah, I, you're you're right. It's just it's it's opened up a new. I don't know. It, it feels like starting again a little bit i kind of thought i'd have this this new camera in my hand and i just just go but um yeah it's, it's not as straightforward as i thought it's it, i'm having to yeah I don't, I don't know if i'm just hitting a creative block or, or whatnot or i'm just not used to the camera or or i'm stuck within the same familiar surroundings you know Mm -hmm. these nuke fife etc it's, it's i've done it to death I, I know them i know these locations inside out so yeah. finding something new at the moment is a little bit tricky so that's that's not helping the situation either so yeah, yeah. there's um, always my lens ball <laughs> right. right that's true um just going back to a point that you made there about obviously your uh, maybe having that balance between family and work and then going out do you have any advice for well suppose myself uh obviously being a, a family man soon so yeah did you say in the beginning uh maybe when you i don't know your first child were you just not going out at all or did you find time to go out well 
I, I never had a camera until um, my oldest daughter Summer was one. Um, so so I, I didn't I don't really know what to tell you about the first year of her life because it, it wasn't applicable. However, obviously we just had Alba um, the first day of lockdown. But at that point, like I couldn't really go many places anywhere. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, but I mean, obviously, family comes first. Um, keep the peace. It's 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 a difficult it's a difficult time, but an amazing time. And uh, I think it's just compromise. <laughs> you know, if you um, if you want to catch sunset that night, you um, just make sure you are the best husband and father that day. <laughs> No, I don't. I, there's, it's really, it is, it's, diff, it's difficult to get out and about as much, but the older they get, the more freedoms that come. And because, it, like, because it's just going to be one child, like, that's, that's uh, it's much easier than, yeah. than two. Nice. You, it, you won't think that, like, in the first few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, it's, it's the best, it's cliche, but it's the best thing ever. Plus, you can use your child as a, a model for portrait shoots. It's, uh, it's all good. <laughs> uh, <like this. laughs> did you mention that you stay? Did you say East Nuke? No, did I just? Yeah, East uh, Nuke. So East Nuke is. Uh, I, I live in Penning, which is one of the uh, East Nuke villages. Nuke just means corner in Scots. Um, so it's just a corner, East Corner of of Fife. Right. Um, which means something quite rude in people watching. Apologies, but um. In the East Nuke, you have Anstruther, Crail, um, Cellar Dyke, St Monans, Ely, and Earl's Ferry, and um, uh, Kings Barns as well. Right. So it's just those collection of coastal villages. So in terms of like photography, it's it's heaven a wee bit. But as as I say, because I live here and see these places all the time, it's much harder. And sometimes like somebody comes from somebody that I know might come from say the west coast or Glasgow or whatever and capture a shot and I'm just like how did I not see that <laughs> and it's just a fresh set of eyes you know coming yeah, into to, to the area so yeah I've only been a couple of times uh, I tried to get the pier the zigzag um, oh yeah I tried to get that uh, but it was just it was one of those it was just a passing visit so it wasn't anything conditions wise it was literally when I first mm-hmm. when I first got my uh, Lumix. I went uh, with my girlfriend and went up, and I got a chippy and Strother. Um, <laughs> has to be done. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I got a chippy, and yeah. then just, I went around and sort of photographed, and that was one of the spots that I, I wanted to go to, just to obviously see mm-hmm. it and things. It wasn't necessarily to get the conditions, but Hopefully now that I'm a wee bit better, I might get I might get up that way um, when we yeah. can capture definitely. it better. Definitely trying. Uh, somebody was just messaging me about this today. I was saying, you know, you want to uh, um, high tide, just check the tides. Yeah. High tide at sunset or sunrise. That's you know, it's, if there's no tide, it's I think it's the ugliest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. It's quite handy having it so close because that was a, a great place to practice the long exposure stuff. Um, but I guess what I did a wee bit too much was was go there too often and um, maybe it wasn't so special anymore. So yeah. I try not to go that often. Um, it, normally I, I, I just go between November and February and because that's when like we get sunrise and like just... Yeah. over to um, where it rises and where it um, sets like they're really quite close to each other so the, clo- the colours are, are always so much better yeah. at that time of year um, so yeah try and just visit it in the winter months now. It is one of those places that well especially from your recent post I was <laughs> I was a bit like what's the point of me going because there's no way <laughs> there's no way I'll be able uh, to do better than what you've done because uh, you, 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 you would definitely I think I sometimes feel like I over edit and I think I, I did over edit it there 
but um, it works though. You, you, you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to say this is the scene. Like the, this is the scene that was right in front of me. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, I, I posted a video and you could see sort of what the conditions were like, but um, I just kind of saw the baby blues and the baby pinks and got a bit excited and, and carried away. And I just, I, I quite often like it to um, just be a wee bit dreamy, maybe take you away a little bit. And yeah. yeah so, so I guess that's my, my excuse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it is just Lightroom and I love it. And um, I find it and really exciting, as exciting as maybe not quite as exciting as being at the location and taking the shot but um i, I love editing a lot and i could spend hours just editing photos yeah. but equally i could spend hours and being frustrated you know if, if if i think something if i've got a shot that i'm like you know this is I'm quite happy with this and then the editing doesn't go well i always just stop reset it and then maybe even wait i've waited weeks months even sometimes even a year to go back to a photo yeah. and then have another go and being quite happy with it um so i, I would yeah I, I always say to to be able to if, if you're not if you're not happy with edits just just put the tools down come yeah. back to it yeah no point getting too frustrated no 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 you're right it's uh, it is amazing how sort of editing is such a big part like i've said it in previous uh, talks with people and just i think that's one thing i under it estimated a wee bit was just how much you actually do edit and mm -hmm. I was lucky enough that I knew Photoshop and uh, Lightroom beforehand um, to the mm -hmm. basics, but like even still like there's things that I see people doing that like it doesn't it doesn't bother me um, but it's probably more the fact that I can't get to like <laughs> get to how they've done that um, so yeah. I suppose it's all practice and learning and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it is a it's one thing that I've sort of realised more and more is just how much you actually need to. Well, you don't need to, but it definitely enhances your images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I I completely agree. Um, but I I still edit on my phone. Like I, I do have Lightroom on on the laptop, but. I just I much prefer editing on my phone. I just always have. But I, I invested in April um, when lockdown started. I invested in. Um, I didn't invest in it right. I had I had the Lightroom package that had like it was Lightroom plus I think it was like forty gig of memory or whatever uh, for the cloud storage. And yeah. I didn't realise it's the same price. You could just have twenty gig and you get a Photoshop for free. So I didn't realise that until April last year. So. So I did get Photoshop and um, I haven't explored it totally. I mean, I've I've put up some stuff like some crazy stuff like with the light, like this, like the lens ball and the the um, light trail going through it and stuff. But yeah. um, in fact, it's not even a it's not even a proper lens ball. I've just created it like in Photoshop, yeah. but only by YouTube and yeah stuff and copying. Um, and I've done some other wacky stuff that I've put on my grid and actually took down because it was <laughs> so bizarre. But um, that's that's where we were at last year, wasn't it? It was the uh, madness and creativity and lockdown and, and all that jazz. Yeah. But it's it's really handy for like like cleaning like I don't know like a beach scene, you know, just just taking out some stuff and making it a lot smoother. Yeah, because the like the 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 sort of healing on Photoshop is so much better than the the Lightroom one. It's like I think Lightroom is ridiculous sometimes. Uh, it's 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 like a different. It's like a I don't want to say it's like a game changer because it, it's the same like Adobe is the same package. I've obviously done it for a reason. Mm -hmm. but I think that the thing that I notice with Lightroom is it's so quick and easy to almost edit your photos in quite a. I would say like a quicker way in terms of mm -hmm. changing colours, like all the stuff's there, whereas Photoshop you almost need to know where you're looking and I would say it's a lot more like in depth of like a software, like there's so much almost to find out about it, whereas Lightroom, yes. you could almost probably watch a YouTube for like an hour and get a good idea of 
mm. how to use it. Um, but yeah, that's one thing. It's just like the cloning stamp on, <laughs> on Lightroom. It's like if you click there, it just takes it from like a random place. <laughs> totally. Um, that's ridiculous. So, yeah. No, there is. I mean, some some people are like incredible at Photoshop and they know their way around it so well. Like, um, see that the, I put up a post tonight and it's a it's a snowy cottage, but I thought it was quite boring, but. I wanted to add chimney smoke and I had no idea how to do that. <laughs> Eventually found out that like, you know, I was like, I was getting the, the brush and I, I didn't even know how, like, I couldn't find the brush. <laughs> so I had to like Google like, where is the brush in Photoshop? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, so tonight's post, the chimney smoke's not real, I'm afraid. I I found like these three paint uh, brushes where you can just paint on the smoke and then I just like messed about with the the, the fill value and stuff. Yeah. But um, even that was an absolute mammoth task just to do that, uh, you know. Um, so respect to those that, that actually know what they're doing. Ah, exactly. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's definitely something that, that is a skill. Like, there's no doubt about it. Like, there's even things that I do that I've... Like, I know how to cut things out. I know how to use the pen tool, that kind of thing. But even still, it, it's trying to... Like if you say replace the sky and put a sky in, it's not just the case mm -hmm. of cutting it out. Like you need to still do more to make it look realistic because totally, <laughs> it, totally. it just looks shite. It's um, <laughs> no, uh, no. It yeah. is. It's good that yeah. you're obviously opening up to using Photoshop though, because it will mm -hmm. it will help you massively. Yeah. yeah, there was one that I put up recently. I was actually going to do like an IGTV because I've had so many people asking, and, and it's yeah. um it's a sky with a it's a paraglider and, right. the, oh, the motion and people yeah yeah, uh, yeah. But the, the paraglider is like he is there in the, the yeah. shot um but the, the clouds were just a bit like messy and stuff so so yeah i had to like take him out and then like motion blur it and then put him back in but like because of like um because like he was so far away and some of the intricate details you know with these like these i'm gonna say jetpack it's not a jetpack <laughs> you know the, the big fan at the back is, and the strings yeah. between him and the, the the actual sail um they were so light that they didn't come through so i had to like draw them on and i did it once and i was about to post it and i'm so glad i didn't because it was so ridiculous it was <laughs> so bad like <laughs> If anybody like zoomed in, it was it was so bad. Um, so I, I I managed to go back and sort of do it, like spend a wee bit more time because I think what I'm always guilty of, and I guess this is because of lack of time working at home and being a dad and etc., mm -hmm. is I try and do things as quickly as I can. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, maybe not paying enough attention to detail is a massive flaw of mine. So yeah, I, I did go back and and fix that one properly so that the paraglider had strings that, that looked like the strings. Um, but no, by all means, that is that is a real photo apart from the sky, just being motion blurred. <laughs> yeah. Well, your page is obviously doing pretty uh, well, considering if you just do things quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think maybe Insta Instagram maybe um, hides a lot. If, if you got a print, that you might not be seeing that. <laughs> you, uh, know, if you can see all the intricate uh -huh. details. Like that's one thing I've noticed with some of my photos um, that I've put up. Just you kind of it's a bit like oh, like I know it's not perfect, uh, but as soon as you put it on Instagram, really, even if someone zooms in, it's going to be pixelated anyways. Um, I know so, that's it. If someone contacts you and wants it as a print, <laughs> it's a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a tricky question. <laughs> I know <laughs> totally. <laughs> Who would you say is your sort of main influence in photography? There's so many, and I I would say a chop and change. It's it's hard to say one person, but um, a mm. lot like a lot of people kind of just sometimes surprised that like the, the stuff that I actually like is nothing like stuff that I post or or take. So um, I prefer the hubs like um, like city grammars you know stuff like that tokyo um yeah. and i wouldn't say i have a specific favorite photographer mm -hmm. these hubs are just filled with 
incredible photos. And I, I do follow, you know, go into a lot of their pages and have a look. But um, that's probably, yeah, I, I love stuff like that. But I also love, um, I would say my one of my favourite photographers in um, Scotland is probably Damien Shields. Right. So um, if you've not, if you've not had a look at Damien's stuff before, definitely have a, a wee peek and yeah. his stuff's incredible. Uh, so yeah, but there, there's so many people that I've connected with that have inspired me. I, I couldn't really name no. anybody um, because I'd, I'd feel like I'd miss people out. But I guess the, the good thing about doing hubs like Scotland Great Shots and stuff is um, you get to see a massive array of work that's out there and um, so you get to sort of find your and stuff like that but yeah it's, it's um i wish you know i wish uh, people ask me that a lot like who's my favorite photographer and i just don't have an answer I, uh, there's just so much stuff that's incredible out there and i know that photography not just through cameras but through smartphones and the evolution of of yeah the cameras and these things are just getting incredible Incredible that um, there's just more and more content. It's only going to grow and grow. I think. Yeah. So yeah, I don't have a an answer. <laughs> no, that's that's fair. Because um, to be honest, a lot of the time, like it's a question that puts people on the spot, and I do even myself. Like a lot of the time, it is just looking on Instagram and. It doesn't necessarily have to be a specific photographer. It is just the photograph that they've taken that mm -hmm. maybe inspires you or gives you an idea for when you next go out. So, no, nah, I totally, um, I totally get your answer. Uh, that's fair enough. Um, you mentioned Scotland Great Shots just now, um, which obviously thanks for uh, a few features that uh, I think you've selected. So. When when was it you started that, and why why did you start that? I, I didn't actually start the page. Um, what happened was there was a guy, um, the guy called Billy, like started like all the sort of Scottish hubs. There's, there was like ICE Scotland, IG Scotland, blah blah. So he had Scotland Great Shots that him and uh, Jimmy Howden did, yeah. I think, for a while. It must have been like three years ago or four years ago. Um, they just approached me and said, "Would you be interested in being a, a moderator?" Yeah, and that was it. And it's just a, you know, it's just a case of of select <laughs> selecting photos and putting it up there. But I am quite conscious of the fact that people could look at these hubs um, for inspiration for visits to Scotland. Yeah. Um, so because of my job as tourism officer and you know having worked at Visit Scotland and stuff, there's a lot of yeah. um, moral questions in there and I, I didn't want to just have sky all the time and Elan Don and Castle all the time, you know, as much yeah. as I love those locations and I think I've you know I posted post both of those locations probably in the last month or two myself. But um it was I really wanted to sort of open up more of Scotland, you know, like the hidden gems. That there's so much of Scotland that it doesn't get featured um yeah on big sites or in marketing campaigns that are worthy of um, being shown. But yeah. also the other one is, is to showcase um, people's work that deserve to be showcased on a platform to, to a lot of people, um, including your, you know, yourself. Um, yeah. So, so that, that's, that's, I would say that's my, my main reason. It's not, it isn't a tourism page. It is, yeah. It's more for photography. And, and to showcase you know who, who's out there but also showcase our beautiful country yeah exactly and i think one of the main things with even me taking photographs obviously i've not really seen most of scotland but especially down in the borders it is such a nice area that it's kind of maybe it's not off the radar but because it's maybe so close to england people kind of forget about it um mm -hmm. And there is like so many nice uh, areas around here that I would say I've probably photographed most of them, but um, like <laughs> there is just things that, well, I think it's Stitcher Waterfall that I went to. Um, yeah. That 
it's one of those that it's just it's so out of the way and so hard to get to the there's hardly anyone's really been to it, even people on the borders and it's just one of those kind of hidden gems that uh, there's obviously a lot them um, around Scotland that are similar <laughs> like yeah. it's nice to be able to kind of show more of Scotland like not just being sky and um those castles mm. that you mentioned so no yeah. it's, it's a good thing and it does it helps the likes of me grow my following as well and hopefully that will more people will see that through my page and just it's just a cycle isn't it and I mean I, I don't like it is it's it's great um but I, I I do at the same time understand that hubs like that can be controversial as well um, you know, so when, when it's a talking point, I don't necessarily step up and say, oh, you know, I, I do this page sometimes. Um, just because I think I think sometimes people feel that it could be the same shots, the same people. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and I, I don't follow too many hubs myself, especially Scottish ones. There's a couple of ones that I really like, mm -hmm. um, but I don't follow too many myself. And you, but you mentioned them, um, you know, down in the Scottish borders where you live. It's, it's it was last February, just before the whole pandemic, and um, I did a, a a visit Scotland trip down yeah. there, and it was incredible. I was absolutely blown away with with the whole area, and it's probably the one area in Scotland that I don't know much about. I've only played rugby there. That's getting on a bus, going, playing, and going home. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was really good. Uh, but I remember like Visit Scotland contacted me and said we'd like you to do this trip, and you know I didn't know where it was going to be, and I was taken aback, and it was south of Scotland because, um, not in a negative way, but just I was just kind of like, oh, shit, I don't know anything about the area so much, you know, I, I really don't, and it was incredible. So we spent like the the first sort of day. In Dumfries and um, in Peebles as well, uh, we went to the Big Burn Supper at night. Saw some awesome music, Caravola uh, Castle. Uh, we went across to Melrose Greenmere's Tale. Um, yeah. We stayed in the Hope Wing at, at Abbotsford, which right. was just an incredible experience. So yeah, those are just some of the the highlights from a, an incredible four day trip. And uh, when the, when I can do, I'd love to take my family back down there and, and show them some of these places as well. Leader Fruit, is it Leader Fruit Viaduct? Yep. Is that? No, yeah. So no. I think, I think your, I think your photo was one of the first times I'd ever seen that, that bridge. And yeah. um, so I was absolutely delighted when, when we went there as well. Um, so yeah, that was, that was, that's a really, really cool spot. I'd love to go back and, and recapture. It's one of those spots that is five minutes from a house and it's a, uh, I photographed it so many times and it was funny because uh, Andrew McDonald, uh, he's a photographer from Ancrum, uh, which is just sort of 10 minutes from me, and he went in the snow and it just it just popped like the oranges against the white and I was so jealous. Eh? <laughs> I was absolutely devastated. Um, but I, I, Yeah, I feel that. that that feeling um, and I get like total sunset anxiety you know if I see the sky out <laughs> and like you, you see some people on Instagram saying like you know in their stories and they might be like oh, I hope somebody's out there capturing it <laughs> I'm totally with it I'm like I hope nobody is out there because if I'm not enjoying it I don't want anybody to <laughs> capture this. <laughs> no exactly it is um, but in a way I'm kind of glad someone did get it because mm. It might give me inspiration for the next time uh, it snows. Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, a lot of it is just the right time and the right right place, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, a final question would be: if you could only take one more photograph ever anywhere in the world, what would it be? I'm so not ready for that question. <laughs> Um, it would it would probably be it would probably be the fourth bridge. That's that's probably my favourite subject. Yeah. And I'd like if I could fill my feed with the fourth bridge, then I would. But I can't. You know, I can if I wanted to. That'd be ridiculous. Uh -huh. um, 
but it's the the all the fourth bridges I could spend all day just yeah. photographing them in different conditions and um I it's also the one place I've probably been the most, but it's the one place that I've never ever gotten a photo and looked at it and said this I'm so happy with this photo. I've never gotten a photo that I'm really happy with there. Yeah. Um so it's a it's a never it's a challenge that's gonna go on and on. <laughs> Hopefully not for long, but it could be for the rest of my life. So so yeah, I'll say the fourth bridge. <laughs> no, that's a good answer. It's um it's just so iconic, especially like to Scotland as well. And it's mm -hmm. uh, it's one place that I've I've never really got a good photograph to be honest. It's just one of those that I've been up um like an in pass and just stopped off and tried to get something at the time, but mm -hmm. I've just never properly went sunrise or uh, sunset to try and get something so it, yeah. it's definitely on my list as well um yeah. yeah i've spent so many sunrises there and it's just like it's never happened yeah. and it's it's just be where my like sometimes if i i might like before i was working at home i, I could have meetings in glasgow or edinburgh so I'm passing that way and it just never happened, you know, the sunrise never happened. And if I'm here, it's such a risk to spend like almost an hour traveling to, to South <laughs> Queen's Ferry yeah. to try and get nothing. So, yeah, it's a, it's a diff difficult one. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, fingers crossed you get it. Um, I, won't, I won't ask you to reveal what sort of photo you're looking for because no doubt someone, <laughs> someone will get it before <laughs> you. Um, but now, nah, fingers crossed. Uh, so thanks mostly for coming on. I really enjoyed the chat. Thanks for asking. No, it's good. Um, it's nice just to sort of speak to other people and sort of learn more about how they got into photography and mm -hmm. just pick up sort of advice from them because, like, I'm always learning, eh? and suppose likewise you as well. Yeah, no one definitely. Like, I don't think even if you've done photography for 10, 15, 20 years, you're always going to pick things up, eh? So... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Spot on. All right. Cool. Cheers, mate. See you later on.